welcome back, everybody. We're going to get started with offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Jeff Levy. Camera's ready in the back. Okay, we're just going to go straight to questions. And we'll start with Ryan Aber. Ryan. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, one of your new receivers, Brendan Thompson. What, what stood out to you about him so far, and, and specifically his speed? Yeah, just just that. You know, just the fact that he's got this great top end speed. Again, he's a young guy that's got a lot of ball ahead of him. So he needs to have a great fall camp, just like everybody else, but uh, a dynamic guy that can, that can get down the field and go make plays. Uh, Jenny? Uh, Jeff, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about receivers. Um, Emmett Jones obviously coming into his first year with you guys. What are you expecting him to bring to that group? And obviously, you've got a lot of new faces. Yeah. What's sort of his relationship been like so far with those guys? Consistency and toughness. A guy that's been through a lot, that's got an incredible story, that's got you know all these uh, different experiences that he's gone through to, to put him in the situation that he's in today, and and being able to share that with his guys, you know, and so. I think that part of it's been great for the room. We got a bunch of young guys in that room and a bunch of guys that are incredibly capable but hadn't done it on the field. So being able to reach them every day, being able to get it out of them every day, Emmett's going to be able to do that and uh, excited about having him here for sure. George? Uh, Jeff, obviously Dylan talked a lot about situational football and improving there. What exactly, what situations are you looking to improve upon? and? What does Dylan need to improve most this year? Yeah, I mean, the, the immediate, obviously, is just third down, fourth down. You know, we've got to be better in those situations. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that in the off season last spring through the summer. You know, accuracy is a huge part of it. Protection is a huge part of it. And then route detail is something we've talked a ton about with the, with the receiving crew. So uh, it's a group effort, me putting us in the right play and, and then being able to go out and execute cleanly. Obviously, bringing back Stogner is it's the big addition there in that tight end room. But just the rest of the guys there, just can you kind of talk about them and, and the depth that you've seen? Here's some guys that maybe stood out to you. Yeah, having Stog back was huge. We needed somebody that played a lot of ball at that position. Obviously, with losing B. Will and DP last year, so um, Stog's got, he's brought that. He's had a again, he had a really good spring, had a really good summer, and he's created. Uh, leadership inside that room and really with the unit, which has been great. Having Blake Smith, a guy that, again, has not played a ton of ball, but he's played some, um, being able to be here. And then with the additions in the room as well with Ham and having Cade get here uh, this summer were, was really good. So looking for uh, some quality depth in that room. Uh, fall camp for those guys. The next 20 practices are going to be huge, again, just like for everybody else. But uh, creating depth in that room is going to be important. Okay, come over to the side, Jesse Green. Jeff, I want to ask you about the running back room. Obviously, Eric Gray being a really productive guy last year. With some young guys in that room, how do you kind of hope things shake out in, in that room during fall camp? Again, I think we've got guys that are incredibly capable, whether you look at Marcus and what he's done when he's been able to be on the field. I think everybody knows that I'm a fan of his um, and a guy that's incredibly talented. we got to be able to keep him on the field. He's got to stay on the field. Uh, and then you saw flashes from a couple of the young guys, obviously, last year uh, with Javante and Gavin. And those guys have taken... Uh, their role and they've ran with it. There's a ton of trust uh, with those two guys. Um, again, you know what they were able to do as true freshmen, uh, especially towards the end of the season. Gavin didn't play much. Javante played obviously a little more, but excited about where they're at. But where they're going is uh, is going to be a lot of fun to watch. You like the running backs and the young guys. There, there's no way to prepare them for you know a 12, 13 game season other than going through that, right? Yeah, that, that's absolutely part of it. We talk about it all the time. Experience, you got to live it. No, there's no doubt. How do you, I guess, get that going, knowing you're going to have to lean on them and that they may have to carry a bigger load than they ever have before? Yeah, I think the good thing is, is I do think there's quality depth in the room. Again, you know, with Marcus, uh, with Javante, with Gavin, with Tawi, having Caleb Hicks here, having Hollywood here, you know, we've got real depth inside the room. And so I think that's a huge part of it, being able to, go have a great fall camp, get a ton of work in, and at the same time making sure that we are ready for this 13, 14 week season, you know, as we get going. James? Jeff, at the end of last season, you weren't satisfied with how your offense did, even though you've scored points and things like that. As you get ready to go into camp, where do you think you are offensively and 
What are your biggest goals going into this camp? What do you need to do? Yeah, I, I think we're in a lot better place today than we were a year ago today. Obviously, being year two, that's everybody in, inside the unit. Um, I think that's obvious. But the next part of it is going into fall camp, man, we want to create great efficiency. You know, we've, we've got to be able to run the football whenever we want to run the football and when we have to. And so uh, doing those two things, I think, will help us tremendously. Um, that'll help us situationally as well. And those are two things that we're going to continue to talk about as we're straining through camp. Back to the right side, Barry. You said on Dylan, third and fourth down efficiency. Yeah. How do you practice that? Yeah, you, you put them in those situations, you know, and we did it a bunch in the spring. Uh, we spent a lot of time watching a ton of ball, uh, watching, you know, whether it's the best third down offenses in the NFL or the third down offenses in college football, um, you know, watching those guys operate over and over and over, looking at the route detail, uh, understanding the protection piece of it from the QB standpoint, from his, from his seat and being able to put us in the, in the right situation there are, are all critical things that he's had great growth in and again accuracy is going to be a huge part of it at the end of the day with you know with smaller windows and tighter windows in those situations where we got to pitch and catch too i guess what i mean is what's the difference between that and second down i mean in the game there's more pressure yeah well the best third replicate that on tuesday and we've talked about this a ton the the best third down is not getting the third down being great on first and second down obviously so uh again those guys understanding the the heightened urgency inside those situations and being able to go out and produce over and over and over again to keep us on the field. Coach, a couple of uh, taller receivers that kind of had a little bit of intrigue but are kind of out there. At least, at least I don't know their status right now. Nick Anderson and uh, Gibson, yeah. where are they? Yeah, bo both of those guys, uh, they had good springs. They've had really good summers. Nick, I think, is healthier than he's been since he's been here. Um, a guy that is really confident right now in how he's going about his business. Jay Gibb has steadily matured every single day and worked himself into a really good spot. Jay Gibb is, uh, is a guy that's incredibly talented and along with Nick. And these guys are, again, these guys are freshmen um, that are going into year two that we're looking to see a huge jump and guys, again, that are incredibly capable, got to go do it. Brian Chapman. Jeff, we talked about um, Austin Stogner and, and Blake, what they bring. How difficult is it to make sure that those guys are ramped up to where they need to be headed into the season while also trying to develop that depth behind them with the younger guys throughout camp? Yeah, with some of the ways that we practice with multiple walkthroughs inside of one walkthrough setting or multiple seven on sevens inside of a seven on seven setting, you're getting you're getting a bunch of reps for a bunch of guys. And so we'll continue to monitor that and make sure that those guys are getting the reps they need to get them where they need to be. Let's go to Colton Solly. Yeah, for him to continue just to entrench himself in the offense and create trust and and command, you know, those, those are the things that uh, that we need to see him do. Again, he had he had a good spring. He's had a really good summer. These guys have worked incredibly hard. He spent a ton of time in the building. So uh, just finding ways to create experience, you know, and create a voice as he's working through it with obviously with Dylan being the guy. Hey, uh, on the way back, John Hoover. Yeah, Jeff, I heard you make reference last week to uh, the way you phrased it was something like the issues we faced last year and the issues we faced this year are night and day difference. Can you kind of elaborate on some of the issues that you faced last year and how you guys had to deal with those and, and how this year is different? Yeah, I, the thing that comes to mind, Coach V talks about it all the time, but it's competitive depth. We've got more than one guy in every single room at every single position that can go operate and go play at a high level. And I think that today is – a little different than where we were a year ago today. Um, so that's going to be a huge part of it, just like we just talked about the rep count and fall camp, to be able to get guys ready to go play at a high level and everybody in the room understanding, regardless of who's in, we expect to play at a high level. That's the expectation and be able to go score and take care of the football and have ball control and, and run the rock and be great situation. And it doesn't matter who's in the game. So that's going to be a huge part of fall camp. You know, and again, we're. We're in a much better place from a roster standpoint today than we were a year ago today. Okay, we'll go right side, second round, James Jackson. Coach, how do you feel like having an experienced quarterback like Dylan Gabriel on your offense? How does it affect things for you? Do you feel like you're more creative? 
Yeah, I, I absolutely do. You can put a little more on Dylan. And again, he's he's now played a ton of ball. And this is a guy that, you know, stay healthy. He's going to go. I mean, I, I would like to think he's going to be a top 10 passer in the history of college football. You know, and that's that's something that uh, that, that matters. You know, he's going to have a ton of production. He's had a bunch of production. He's got to play better. I got to call it better. We've said that. Um, but that guy allows you to put a lot on the entire unit because he's played a whole bunch of ball. And yeah, we'll go back to Jamie. Jeff, um, you uh, got pretty consistent play out of your offensive line last year, but lose some pretty good pieces yeah. too. Where are those guys? And when you talk about more efficient offense, what's their role? In all of that? Well, it's a, it's a huge piece of it. We've again, we've we've gotten to a point today where we feel pretty good about it. We're going. I think we got a chance to feel great about it as we get into week one, uh, with Walter at left and Tyler at right, uh, Rame obviously being back at center, McKay at right guard, and then you know the left guard position being able to go battle in camp. And again, we've got guys behind those guys that are, are real players. So that's uh, that's the fun part of it. And we've got to have a great camp. Uh, we've got to stack days, uh, one on top of the other, but. I, I got a feeling we're going to really like where we are up front going into week one. Yeah, Jeff, uh, Ryan mentioned Brandon Thompson, but also get Chickaway's Petaway in. I know yeah. he was a mid year guy, but you know, what's been your first impressions during his first couple of months? Yeah, we're going to like Jack West. He's, uh, he's a guy that's, that's dynamic, but man, he loves football and he's serious about being great. And he's an incredible kid uh, that's done everything right. And he's, uh, He's going to have a great career here if he keeps stacking these days, like, like we're talking about with, with the rest of the unit. Okay, second round. Uh, going back to Dylan Gabriel, how has his connection grown with some of the returning receivers? Yeah, I, th I think, again, you're just one more year into it. And you you think about some of these freshmen, freshmen that we're talking about, whether it's Nick or Jay Gibb or Gavin Freeman, and you think about how limited amount of time he had with those guys from a rep standpoint compared to where we're at today with it. And uh, I think there's a reason for great growth right there. Uh, James Hill. I know the off season was going to be really, it was really important to you guys. Do you feel like you got out, got out of it what you wanted to? I, maybe this is a better question several days into camp, but did you feel like that the guys progressed like you wanted to? I, I feel like the, the urgency with how everybody operated, understanding the uh, the commitment it was going to take to get us to where we needed to be and the expectation in the building every single day with all the change. Uh, again, I think today compared to a year ago today is completely different. Uh, did we get done what we need to get done? We'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, but uh, uh, sure feel good about how our guys have worked and how they fought to, to strain to get to where we are today to get us ready to go for fall camp. Yeah, last year, just how things worked out, it was pretty short wide receiver rotation. For you, just ideally, how many guys, do you have a number of, of guys you'd love to be able to rotate in? Yeah, you want to play six or seven receivers. You want to play two to three tight ends. And you don't want those guys playing 80 to 85 snaps. And that's, again, we've I don't know how many times I've said competitive depth since I've been standing here. Coach V talks about it nonstop. You know, and that's, again, that's a big part of where we're at. And. We need all those guys to come on. We got a lot of guys that are capable with a lot of guys that don't have much experience. You know, so again, these next next three weeks are going to be critical. Okay. Jeff, this is I don't know year three or so heading into the seasons as far as the impact of transfer portal. Yeah. I'm wondering if over the, that short amount of time, have you adjusted anything in the way that you try to integrate those guys because everybody's having to do it. But is there is there anything you've learned over the last couple of years to try to make that? better transition from more guys quicker? Well, you've taken, you know, five years ago, you were trying to get true freshmen to the point to where if they were going to be here in June, you had this great plan to where, you know, not knowing what to do wasn't going to be the reason they weren't going to play. And that's, of course, that's why they call us coach. But now it's taken it to an, another level because you're getting guys that have played a bunch of ball that have experience. So not that it's easier for those guys, but just being able to get them involved in the offense and it being an everyday deal uh, has been has been critical to get them ready for sure. Do you feel like you've come to understand 
what makes guys, when you're looking at them to start with, like, I think this guy, we can work him in. I mean, obviously great talent, but are there other things that you sort of come to understand make a guy capable to mesh quickly? Yeah, I think we talk about it nonstop, too, is just guys that love football. You know, you that that's what you want. Guys that are hungry for it, that are eager to learn, good's never good enough, and finding ways to to fight and scratch and claw to, to be the best they can possibly be. And if you got a little talent to match with that, you got a chance to, to be a good player. Back row, I'm third row, middle, Gary Newman. Follow up, Jeff, to Jenny's question. I get the feeling that the profession is still a little uncomfortable with the portal and, and the effect it's had on, on the sport. Yeah. Are you are you finding yourself more comfortable with the notion it's here to stay and there's no going back and or are you still wrestling with it yourself no I, I feel like it's it's part of it so we got to adapt and and I think that's that's what uh, what my mindset is our mindset obviously is, is adapting and make sure we're doing everything we can to put our roster in the best possible shape it can be in as we move into each and every fall camp and so that's that's where it sits those are the rules we're all playing by right now and that's that's part of it so you know, I'm I'm good with it because that's that's how everybody's having to play ball. Barry, yeah, Jeff, you you were a coordinator before, and you were at OU before. But when you came back, you hadn't been a coordinator at OU. Eighteen months later, what have you learned about that job that you didn't know when you when you took it? Yeah, I, I do. I think coming into it, I I, I knew a, a lot about it. You know, I I think again the the thing that I learned was that. Man, disappointment for those guys' faces every Saturday last week when we were on the wrong side of it was really, really hard. You know, and um, I knew how much I love my alma mater, but being back in the middle of it and the thick of it every single day, I think I've learned real fast that, <clears throat> you know, I knew how, how special OU was to me, but as we stand here today, I, I think even more so than it's ever been, and that's been uh, that's been fun part of it. What kind of things are matter? I mean, how, when you say means more to you, what? How's that manifested, or, or what are some examples of that? Yeah, I, ju I just think as much as anything, having great pride for the interlocking OU and understanding that, man, we are fighting every single day to get it back where where we want it to be and where it needs to be. And that's uh, that's been the everyday strain since we got down in Orlando. And so it being on the mind every single day more than it's ever been, I think, is a huge part of that. And, and again, we've got guys that, man, are committed to – to making it happen, and so that's that's been a proud thing for me is just seeing our guys work uh, all spring and all summer to put us in a position to be able to go chase it this fall. Okay, and back to Eli. Jeff, I'm sure you're looking for leaders this this next month. Yep. But when you don't come back with Braden and Marvin and, and Eric, where does Dylan's presence as a guy who's played this game so much and been around? Yeah. Maybe more important this year. Yeah, I mean he's got he's got to have a big voice and he's got to be able to use that voice when it's needed. But I do think at each position, when you look at it from Dylan to Stog to Drake to McCade, you know, Rain coming back, obviously Walters played a lot of ball. I think there's some guys in the room inside the unit that have some great experiences and are tough guys and hard nosed guys and blue collar guys and that's that's what we need and uh, those guys have, have created a voice uh, since we've walked in the door and it's it's louder than ever right now and we're we will go as our leaders go and I, our guys understand that and uh, they'll have a big part in what's going on this fall camp Any more questions for Jeff? Jenny? I know you can't talk about guys that haven't signed yet but it looks like how you guys are recruiting the state of Oklahoma is pretty strong. I know obviously national recruiting is what you guys do, but what's the what's the level of importance? How, how are you looking at the Oklahoma guys out there right now? Coach V talks about being inside out every single day and understanding who we are, understanding our footprint, targeting the right guys. You know, we've talked about toughness and mentality and blue collar guys that love football, guys that are serious about being great. And so pinpointing those guys and making sure they're a part of the program uh, and a big part of the program is incredibly important. So uh, that's Coach V's leadership and everybody uh, sitting at, around the table having incredible buy-in to go go make sure we identify those guys the right way and go get them. We'll go to John in the third row. Yeah, Will Farouk had a really strong first kind of exposure to college football last year. What are your expect expectations for him going into his second year? 
full-time Yeah, that's one of the guys in the room that has had some production and has played quite a bit. So we're looking for him to take great strides. You know, he's lived it. He understands what it takes to play at a high level every single week now. Now he needs to go do it. Um, him, as much as anybody else, needs to put together three great weeks of fall camp, continuing to create trust, continuing to create consistency inside the building every single day. Uh, but a guy, when he had the ball in his hands, he did great things with it. So we're looking for him to uh, to take that and run with it. That's all the time we have for Jeff at the podium. He's going to be available for a few Thanks, more minutes man. on the